So this is the Qualcomm Dragon Board 410, um, and uh, so it's about to arrive. And this is, uh, yeah, this is the processor is the uh, 410, the um, APQ uh, 8016. This is a board that's actually going to be manufactured, that is manufactured from Aero Electronics. Uh, this was one of the proto boards, which is why it's red, but the new ones are actually blue. Um, so it has uh, USB support, full size HDMI, um, micro SD connector for ADB for Android, uh, SD card, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, high speed connector, low speed connector for. CSI. So, so what do you, who are you? What do you do? So my name is Mark Chalabois. I'm a director of engineering at Qualcomm and I do open source software strategy. So um, Qualcomm has been part of the Linaro a little bit. Yes. So what's going on with um, the Qualcomm and Linaro? So Linaro uh, and Qualcomm work together. I work on the landing team with uh, Qualcomm for these boards and getting Linux support getting upstream support in the kernel for uh, the platform so that people can take it and use it and have really good um, uh, upstream support. The Freedreno GPU driver also works on this, so it's a fully open source uh, GPU driver, which is really exciting. And what else? Uh, right now there's a Ubuntu variant that runs on it. Uh, we're working on open embedded support and uh, Linux, uh, sorry, uh, Android is also supported on the board. Nice. Uh, so that's a lot of work, no? Uh, How yeah. are you managing? How many guys are you on the team? Well, uh, on the landing team, there's uh, there's a few people in the Naro. There's people at Qualcomm that work on it. Uh, there's um, uh, even partner organizations like Arrow, for instance, that are working as part of the, the board and the ecosystem. So there's a lot of people collaborating on it. And even just the 96 boards program in general in Naro. Um, this is a 96 boards compliant spec board. So it has uh, all of the different uh, interfaces so that there's mezzanine boards that can plug in that will be compatible with all different 96 boards. Uh, and they're starting to build up the software ecosystem around things like GPIO, GPIO libraries so that you can write an application and that application will work across 96 boards. So uh, how smooth is it to work right now in the open source uh, to get this to work? Uh, uh, this how is... far are you from a product that, are you, are you just, I mean it's launching very soon. Oh, it's, so it's is large. everything going to be ready? Uh, yeah, the, there was initially some uh, some supply issues of just getting the boards, but I think those are resolved there. Uh, Arrow is getting a, another big shipment of boards, uh, so everything should be set there. Uh, the software, there's been lots of releases with uh, Ubuntu and, and um, uh, sorry, and Android and open embedded. We have some preliminary support. It's not fully uh, flushed out, but that should be coming in the coming months. Uh, and then uh, as far as upstream support, this board has almost full upstream support. There's a few things which have been submitted that should be in the next release kernel version. So what's with open embedded? What, what is the main advantage of using open embedded in this kind of board? So for people who want to use this board for industrial applications or deeply embedded applications, they may not want a full desktop and they may have a very specific application and that's really the main application that's going to run on the board. What they want to do is have something that's really optimized, comes up very quickly, minimal footprint to maintain, minimal set of software dependencies. And so with Open Embedded, they can customize their software stack as much as they want and get a very customized, minimal image. Um, and, and that just gives them that flexibility. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, a more customizable go-to-market strategy. And uh, Snappy Ubuntu is also Snappy, right? Uh, snappy Ubuntu? It, like it's, it's so getting that's more, more optimized working on. and it's working? It's working? Uh, we've not done Snappy on the board here. Um, Canonical may very well choose this as a, as a platform to support for Snappy. Uh, I think Snappy is still in development, so we'll see sort of where that, how that ecosystem evolves and, and how Snappy plays a part. So this is, a, this is an SOC that's uh, mainly released, initially released for smartphone market. Right? Correct. So, uh, what's the vision here? Is it getting, the open source here is towards getting kind of like desktop stuff, uh, uh, so there's new just, kinds of devices? Yeah, if you look at the, the way cell phone technology is evolving, lots and lots of applications of cell phone technology um, are, are coming now to market. So there's drone market, for instance. You have uh, these devices that are drones that want to have flying cameras. They need GPU. We have a DSP processor that's on this board that can run an RTOS. So you now have the ability to run something like a flight stack on the DSP, which we do. 
and then have the application processor to do some high-level processing for things like object recognition and object avoidance. What kind of DSP is that? It's a hexagon DSP. So that's one of the things that are part of the Snapdragon platform. It's on the SOC? It is on the SOC, yes. What do smartphones do with that DSP? Uh, there's some, so uh, modem can be run on DSP for instance, the uh, audio stack can be run on the DSP, there's lots of offload that can be done, sensor processing can be done on the DSP so that you can turn the, the CPU off and have the DSP do a lot of this processing in the background. And so how smooth is this free Drino? Uh, how, how, what's the status? It and, works. Uh, is it just going to get better and better? Oh yeah, so Free Drino right now works out of the box. You have upstream support for the board. You basically can get, you know, an upstream kernel. You use the upstream for Drino and Mesa packages, and uh, and you have an accelerated X display with X graphics. The nice thing about Free Drino is you get both OpenGL ES and OpenGL support. So uh, there was a demo that was done by uh, George um, here at, at Lenaro, the CEO, and he was demoing Tux Racer, uh, which is an OpenGL application running on the board. And they, so that means there could be uh, maybe some geniuses somewhere in the world uh, sitting down with the board and free Drino and just improving it Absolutely. and submitting it back and yep. making the GPU even better and better. Yeah, so we're hoping definitely now that Rob's added uh, its OpenGLES 3 support, um, the next thing to, to try to get working will be hopefully uh, compute. So using compute shaders uh, for applications that don't use visual graphics like a desktop, but want to just use something like compute for this for robotics applications or others, they can take advantage of the GPU as well as the CPU and the DSP to create a, a really highly optimized solution. Nice. So uh, how's the experience here at the Lenara Connect? Are you connecting with many people? Lots of meetings, lots of late nights with meetings and stuff, but it's been really good to connect face-to-face -face with everybody. It's been nice that everybody's been here. Yeah, it's been very productive. Are people asking you for many things? Um, like, can you like to do even more? <laughs> Well, yeah, everybody would like to go as fast as possible. So sure, there's lots of things that we would like to try to, to move towards and improve, but that's what we're sitting down and trying to prioritize you know, what we can do and try to, to bring the most features and, and uh, the best solution possible. Hopefully in a few months, we already start seeing crazy maker stuff yeah. coming out with this board, uh, some awesome, awesome demonstrations of how people will use it. Mm -hmm. So drones and robots and and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, definitely. We hope that the maker community really takes this board and embraces it and shows some interesting things. We really hope to provide some libraries right out of the get-go to make it easy to use GPIOs and uh, provide that enablement to, to really let people go wild with their imagination.